Okay, so before we get into today's full review, I just wanted to let you know, if you're at Home Depot and you're considering buying this pressure washer, the new Ryobi 2700 PSI electric pressure washer, actual usable numbers, I actually got 2,500 PSI, still way more than the competition um, compared to Ryobi's other units. So if you want that high PSI, it's a good unit for you. It operated at 1.125 GPM, so slightly higher than they rate it. Now, if you're looking for kind of a better all around pressure washer and you want it to have the longevity and you want that brushless induction motor, go with the 2,300 PSI. You can mani manipulate the numbers a little bit better. You can use it for your car. You can use it around the house. Um, but if you do want that higher PSI, go with this one. It does not have a total stop system, meaning when you stop pulling the trigger, it's still humming in the background. Um, the 2,300 PSI, the new one does have that, that feature. So. Here we go guys, let's jump into the review. What's up everyone? The time has finally come. I've been watching this thing on Ryobi's website. There was a new 2700 PSI electric pressure washer coming out, it just kept saying coming soon, available at Home Depot soon. Well, I was just at Home Depot the other day and it has arrived. I picked it up immediately and we're gonna check this thing out together. I haven't done anything with it yet. It's still in the box. Um, so I'm excited to open it up, see exactly what it comes with. Now this thing is rated at 2,700 PSI, 1.1 GPM. We will be testing the PSI using our meter. We'll be testing the GPM using a few different tips to see, uh, you know, obviously what the most PSI we're getting and then if we can kind of adjust it for car detailing. Um, then we'll also be testing the power uh, usage, you know, the, the, the amperage and the noise level. I was actually going to be Today's Sunday, today, well today's Saturday for me. I'm posting this video tomorrow, which will be Sunday. And I actually had a different pressure washer review scheduled. Um, it's actually this updated 1800 PSI unit from Ryobi. Uh, couple cool new features on that thing. So make sure you check that out. It'll come out in a few days. Um, but like I said, that was scheduled to come out today. But since this thing's here, I wanted to get this thing uh, some information out to you guys immediately. So let's go. So first things first guys, I'm just gonna put it down on the ground, open this thing up, pull out all the pieces, and we'll look over them. Now, I'll tell you right off the bat, this box is very heavy. It's a, it's a substantial unit, it's quite heavy. You can tell it is a brushless induction motor. Uh, induction motors are just typically, and, and with brushless, they're meant to last longer. So from my experience with the induction motors, switching out the tips, the different orifice sizes of the tips to manipulate the GPM and PSI, there's usually a pretty drastic change right off the bat. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and test everything with this one so we'll know that for sure. Now assembly I didn't cover in the video. It's very, very self-explanatory, very easy to do. The only thing that's a little bit tricky and I don't know why they did this is that the bolts that they use to, to attach these little attachment pieces, these little holders, aren't a Phillips head. And it's actually a T30. Now if you don't know what a T30 looks like, this is what it looks like. It's a little starburst pattern. So um, I had them, I didn't see one in the box, so if you don't have them, keep that in mind. You're gonna need that to assemble it. So um, I, like I said, I don't think that it comes in the box. I didn't see one. Yeah, I don't see one. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about the features, the features of the unit. Right off the bat, big oversized wheels. I think they're a 12, 10 or a 12 inch wheel. Um, they're hard plastic, but they're texturized. So they feel like they're gonna work really, really well for all conditions that you're gonna be rolling over. Um, it does have the wand holder and as well as a power cord holder. And this is for a 35 foot, uh, 35 foot ground fault electric, uh, ground fault interrupt plug. So uh, plenty of reach there. And then they also do include a hose. So this hose, I believe this is the one that they sell aftermarket typically. Uh, it is rated to 3300 PSI and it is 35 feet long. So 35 feet long is substantially longer than most of these other units, um, the hoses that they come with. Typically they come with a 20 to possibly 25 foot hose. Uh, this one's 35 feet, so they're definitely thinking more industrial grade on this unit. For me personally, I still like going with an Uberflex or a Flex Steel hose and going 50 feet. I just, I like 50 feet as opposed to 35. However, uh, 35 is much better than what they've given you in the past. Let me go ahead and open this up and I, th I checked this hose out. If this is the one that they sell aftermarket, um, I have checked this out in the past and it's very, very cumbersome, uh, meaning it doesn't want to unravel and all that kind of annoying stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. And same deal, it doesn't want to unravel. Um, it's definitely a more industrial grade hose, but it does not, it is not pliable. And as I'm trying to do it, it kinked. 
So I don't like this hose. It's cool. It come, it's nice that they give you 35 feet. Um, it's nice that it matches, but it's very, it's super annoying to work with. It's going to be a bit of a headache to work with and it does kink. So not ideal, but it is better than a lot of the other options because at least it's 35 feet. At least you're going to be able to get some work out of it. It's going to be a headache to work with that 35 feet, but at least you have 35 feet. Now here is the hose that I recommend. This is the, Fle this is the uh, Uberflex hose. Now Flexzilla is a separate brand, but they actually use the same patent as this hose. So you're getting the same construction quality, super, super pliable as you can see, doesn't kink. Um, you can get it to roll over on itself, but there's no memory in the line, doesn't kink. Now this, the good thing about it is the connection point is an M22 by 14 millimeter connection point, which is what this is. You don't need any adapters. You can literally just take this, screw it in and you're good to go. You can add quick connects if you like. I recommend it, it just makes life easier. Um, but you don't need them, it's a direct replacement. Okay, back to features. We get a turbo nozzle or power nozzle, whatever you wanna call it. It has a little piece inside that spins. It creates like a cone pattern. Creates, usually drops the PSI, but creates more power in your cleaning ability. So that's nice that they give you that. On top of that, they give you this, which you don't get this with any of, any of their other pressure washers. You can buy this aftermarket as well. Um, but they're including it in this kit. So what this is, it, it turns on a dial and you can change between all your different settings. So you have soap in a jet form, soap in a fan form, a 15 degree angle, a 25 degree angle, and a 40 degree angle. So that's pretty cool. Now, what are the orifice sizes of that and what we're actually getting, we will test. I'll, I'll run between the 15, 25, and 40 to see what kind of numbers we get. Um, if it's the same orifice size for all of those, we're gonna get the same numbers but we'll test that. Now, right on the top of the unit, you do have, just like the 2300 PSI unit, you have a push button on off. Um, now, I don't see anything indicating that this is going to have the total stop system. Typically, there's a little black piece right in here that is the little relay, I guess, for it, and I don't see it. So when we're testing it, we'll see if it has it, but I don't think it's going to. Um, the wand that they give you is nice. They've upgraded it. You get a nice metal lance that bolts on for added durability. Um, cool colorway of the, uh, of the pressure washer wand. Nice grip up here, a little textured piece in the back on the handle. So really nice there. Um, I still prefer a, a little stubby wand personally, but at this PSI, you might want to have a little bit more control with having a longer one. So we'll see there as well. Overall design guys, right up front here. Uh, if you guys have seen my videos in the past, you know I'm not a huge fan of this. Uh, and what this is, is the water inlet is right here. Water outlet is right here. I hate that they're so close together. I'm not a fan of that because it runs the risk of you getting all tangled up with your hoses. I much rather prefer it having a water inlet on one side and water outlet on the other side. Now with the 2300 unit, when those first came out uh, from Ryobi, it was just like this. No total stop and the attachment points were on the same side. The new updated one now has total stop and the, the points on different ends, much, much better. So are they gonna do that with this? I don't know. Um, we'll have to wait and see, but let's go ahead and jump over to, I'm gonna move over to the front of my shop. We'll hook it up to a water source, hook it up to power and start testing this thing. Okay guys, so we're over to the water source. It is plugged in, it's plugged into the wall. All good to go there. Um, I did install quick connects on the pressure washer wand as well as the hose so that I can install my gauge. So what we do here is just plug it in and then plug it in here. And now we are all in line. We'll get the pressure reading and we'll see exactly what this thing can do. So I just turned the water source on. I'm leaving the pressure washer off. I'm gonna let it kind of purge through. I'm gonna pull the trigger on this and let the air purge out of the line. You always wanna do that so you get accurate results um, and you're not getting a bunch of spurting uh, as you're trying to work. Now on the unit itself, there's no leaks or anything, so that's great. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the unit on now and see if it has the total stop system. And it does not. Just like the, 23, the original 23 PSI unit from Ryobi, this is exactly how it happens. It goes quieter, but it's still running as you can hear. So I'll pull the trigger. You hear it build up and then it stops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the tip on. We're gonna go to a 15 degree nozzle. There we are.
So there's also a bit of a delay, if you can see here. And then it fires up. Let's take a little peek of the PSI rating. It is getting good PSI. Um, so anyways, we're gonna go ahead and plug this thing into the gauge on the wall to test the amperage. And then I'm also gonna grab my phone and we're gonna test the noise level of the machine. So here's a little app I like to use, this little decibel meter. Now in normal circumstances, ambient noise is around 55 to 60, if I remember well, in this little chamber that I have here. Um, now with it just running, I usually get the, the meter about three feet away. Let's go ahead and test that. All right, an average of 73 decibels while it's not running or while it's, you know, no pressure is going through it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pressure washer, pull the trigger and test it. We're getting 85 decibels. Rather loud, it's kind of a higher pitch than some of the other, no uh, other units. But 85 is fair. They usually sit between 82 to 85, so 85 is fine. Now I'm gonna quickly check my, re my amp reader here to see what we're pulling. So give me a second. Okay, and I maxed out at 14.74 amps. Let's go ahead and test the PSI rating now on this guy on the 15 degree setting. There we go, and here we go. Okay, so I'm actually just getting 2,500 PSI, which is still a great number out of an electric pressure washer. I'm gonna switch over to 25 degrees now. The bad part about this, guys, is I wanted to just go and turn it, and when I do that, this whole thing spins with me. So you gotta hold it in the back, flip it over to 25. We'll test that now. Let's see. So same numbers there. I'm gonna switch it over to the 40. Now this just means that whatever the orifice size in here is, it's the same between each of these degrees. So now we're going to the 40. Yeah, same thing, here you go. 40 degree nozzle. Now, I don't know what size orifice is in here, but we're gonna go ahead and grab a 2.5 orifice and a 3.0 orifice and test it. Okay, so I've got two aftermarket nozzles here. I'll have these linked in the description for you guys. You get a whole pack, so if you order a 2.5, you get, I think, a zero, a 15, a 25, a 40. Um, so the 25 degree nozzle that I have here is gonna be my 2.5 orifice, and my 40 degree nozzle is going to be my 3.0 orifice now. Again, the degree doesn't matter. You saw that with the, the nozzle that the Ryobi came with. It's just the orifice size that matters. So putting in the 2.5. And that is extremely disappointing. Extremely disappointing, guys. This is a 2.5 orifice. Here we go. So we're only operating at about 800 PSI just by switching over to the 2.5. The way lower rated units um, are substantially higher than that one using the 2.5. Usually about 1100 PSI. I'm gonna put the 3.0 in real quick just to test it. Yeah, like 650, so unusable. Um, so aftermarket nozzles are not gonna be any benefit with this thing because with car detailing, I typically like to operate between 1,000 to 1,200 or so, um, and these are dropping me way below that. Even if the GPM was really high, they just, it doesn't feel like it is, so no go on these. Okay, so I actually have the 2,300 unit, 2,300 PSI unit around the corner that I tested relatively recently. This is the 15 degree nozzle from that unit. Let's go ahead and plug it on here and see what it gets, because, you know, let's, let's just see. This is a, this is a 1.55 orifice, I guess. Let's see. So with this nozzle, we are getting 2,000 PSI. And it takes a little bit of time for it to get up to it. 
but basically getting 2000 PSI. Now I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what the PSI rating of the 2300 PSI unit was with this, but I think it was right about there. I think it was 2100. So what that tells me is that this motor and pump are basically the same as the 2300 unit. They just manipulated it to get a higher PSI by, by using that nozzle. Alrighty guys, we're gonna go ahead and put this nozzle back on. I'm just gonna use it in the 40 degree since that's the number we're, we're getting a consistent PSI numbers. Uh, 40 degree nozzle. I'm gonna put it into a bucket, run it for a minute, see what the actual GPM rating is. Again, it's rated at 1.1. I'm assuming it should be at least getting that. So here we are. I've got my measuring bucket here. You see the measuring guide on the side. I did take the top off so I could keep, obviously this nozzle was too big for the little hole I made. So we just adjusted it that way. And now I'm going to go ahead and hook up the uh, timer on this for one minute. We'll run it for one minute and see what we get. Okay, on your marks, get set, go. Okay, there's one minute. Let me go ahead and turn this thing off because it's so loud. Man, I was really looking forward to this thing. It was so far, guys. I'm a little bummed out about it. I mean, I was really looking forward to a 2700 unit. All right, so we are at exactly four and a half quarts. So let me go ahead and run that through the calculation. And we are getting 1.125 gallons per minute. So it's accurate, guys. It, it, as much as I'm not happy with the performance really, um, it's, it's pretty accurate. It's getting 2,500 PSI, which is 200 PSI under what they rated at. But typically with all pressure washers, it's typically like if it's rated 1,900 PSI, it usually comes into 1,800 PSI the way I test them. So there's always a little bit of loss. So 2,500, it's close. Uh, 1.1 gallons per minute, we're getting above that. We're getting 1.125, right? Yeah, 1.125. So it is accurate. It's it's a fair representation of the machine. Ryobi always does a good job with that. The thing that I'm bummed about is, I don't know if it's any different really than the 2300 PSI unit, other than the fact that the new 2300 has a total stop system and this does not. Um, when I switched over to the nozzle that the 2300 came with, we were getting about the same numbers. So it may just be that nozzle. Um, I have the 2300, like I said, over here. So I'm gonna put them side by side and we'll look at them and see what, if there's any differences. Okay guys, so here you have it. You have the 2300 PSI on this side, the 2700 PSI on that side. Now obviously the encasings are a little bit different. This one's a little bit shorter than this one, but if we look at the pump itself, it looks to be very, very similar, if not identical. So there's some verbiage written on there. I'm gonna look at that real quick. But this is what I was talking about guys on the 2300 PSI unit. This is the little, this little black piece here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but right here, that's the total stop system. And they did upgrade it, like I said, to have the water inlet on this side, the water outlet on that side, much, much better so you don't get all tangled up, as opposed to this thing where they're right on top of each other. It's not ideal. Now, again, I didn't go over the soap tank. I never use those, so I, I apologize. I don't have any input for you guys on that. I personally don't like them because it runs through the whole entire uh, hose. So I don't like that at all. Um, other than that guys, form factor, the cart looks to be the exact same between these two. So not a lot of difference other than that this one comes with nozzles that are separate versus this whole all in one piece. Um, and the hose on this one is upgraded. The wands are exactly the same as the texture in the back. It's just a different color. So that's pretty much it. Let me take a look at the verbiage on the, on the motors. Okay guys, so on the pump themselves, they do state on the 2700, it does state 2700 PSI, 1.1 GPM, versus this one does state 2300 PSI, 1.2 GPM. Um, however, that is just a sticker. So I don't know if they actually tune them differently or what, but they look to be the same. Uh, so maybe it's just tuned differently. Now the pump on the front, you can see here, um, is much smaller on this one than the 2700 is. This thing's much bigger. So maybe that's the difference, I'm not sure, but uh, it does get more PSI out of this guy. So there's the new Ryobi 2700 PSI electric pressure washer. My final thoughts on it are, eh, I don't, eh, it's okay. Uh, 2700 PSI, I actually got 2500 out of it. But with that said, that is still more PSI than any of the other Ryobis that I've ever tested. So if you're looking for it around the house, pressure washing your driveway and you want that extra PSI, 
it's a great choice for you. It comes with an upgraded hose, it's 319 bucks, versus the 2300 is 299 bucks, so we're $30 difference, but you get the nicer hose, you get that variable trigger, or variable dialed um, nozzle, which apparently is a very, very small orifice, so that's why you're getting that high PSI, because when you manipulate it with the different size nozzles, you lose all the performance. So with that said, guys, um, Definitely, it's a good option, doesn't have total stop, but you do get all that PSI out of it. So whatever that means to you, if it works for you, perfect. For me personally, no, for car detailing, I wouldn't go with that one. I would definitely go with the 2300 PSI instead or any of the other ones. That's it, I hope that helps you guys. Please make sure to like the video, make sure you're subscribed, turn on the notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one.